Ooh! <laughs> I'm not supposed to use that opening anymore. I forgot I got the wrong I got the wrong one. Sorry. Those of you that are watching the live program, recorded viewers will get the proper one. Worry not. Good morning to you. It's Saturday, the 23rd of August, 2014. Oh my god, hasn't the weather changed? It's got very cold, dear. Very cold in dear. And, uh, and today's item of interest, we always have a little item of interest. Just sitting uh, behind us, be behind us, those of... Oh, dear. That, just a minute. Something, something's fallen off. Oh, yeah. uh, always have a little item of interest behind me. Uh, those of you with vision can see it. If you're just listening, I shall now describe for you the little item. It's a wooden um, uh, thing, okay, which is cut in the shape of a small island. Now, I, by the way, uh, I hope my um, audio and uh, audio and uh, picture are in sync today. Those of you watching live, now what's that noise? Oh, just a minute, just a minute. Let me turn turn the ph phone off. I should turn that phone off before I start. One minute. God, is that it? No, nope. one minute. There we are. Done it. Yes, uh, so it's been cut in the shape of a little island, Norfolk Island, where I've been lucky to have been twice. Uh, the island is in the South Pacific, and it is the most beautiful place you've ever been in your entire life. It's quiet, there's no rubbish, and, and it really is very, very small island. Very small island. And the funny thing is, you know, they, they are in the path of, not tornadoes, what are those other things? cyclones they are in the path of cyclones that go in that area that always seem for some reason to turn off and go in another direction at the last minute this indeed happened when i was there in 2011 there was a cyclone coming directly for the island oh, it was ever so windy that night oh god you could actually hear the windows creaking through the wind. Uh, if the wind is strong enough, does it actually break windows? I suppose it would do, wouldn't it? And that, that's always frightened me, but you could act, I, I was in my hotel room. When I say hotel room, don't think of a hotel as in a block. As I say, this is a small island. It was more like, I think it's a, a hotel resort. Oh, no, it wasn't a resort. No, it wasn't. But all the all the rooms were at ground level, like like chalets, like little chalets in, in both of the hotels that I stayed in. And it's just lovely. It's part of Australia, as I say, it's in the South Pacific, but without all the nasties. There's no spiders, no alligators, nothing like that. You know, you're quite safe walking around. And some of the wildlife is 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 so beautiful out there. If you go walking around the cows, OK, cows as in moo, 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 <laughs> the, <laughs> the cows on the island have the right of way. They walk across the roads and they're very friendly. You can go up and stroke them. It's weird, but it's such a beautiful place. I'd love to live there. But. A lot of un unemployment on the island. Um, they are in financial difficulty um, because their their main thing was tourism, and it became very expensive to fly there. You know, for the ordinary um, person like you or me, it did become quite expensive to fly. So people stopped going, and they got into money difficulties. And I, th I gather the main uh, Canberra in australia has bowed them out a few times and, and and so but it's such a bit i mean do try and go if you ever get a little bit of money and you want to go on a nice quiet holiday quiet okay then go there oh, beautiful beautiful anyway so this is what this wooden thing is it's been cut in the shape of the island and they've put a clock in the middle and it says norfolk island at the top there because that's what what the place is uh, unfortunately i left a dying battery in there and it's corroded the clock however the clock is a fairly um 
standard movement in there. And I know you can buy those in Maplins for like five or six quid. So I could replace that. You know, I'll probably replace that. And on the back, because my cousin was running the police on the island. And when I say running the police, you know, there was only a few people there. My cousin's uh, Vince is very, very high up in the Australian police uh, so so much that you know if 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 he gets in the car with me and I'm not driving correct he will tell me oh god you know he's one of those yeah yeah never ever off duty comes home the laptop goes on he's on that all the time but he's I mean I would do anything Monk he's fantastic and I've said before if my cousin in Australia said Chris I've got a job from you over here do you want to come over and do it um, and I'd be be working for him I would gladly go absolutely. And he would be able to trust me 100%. I would absolutely do that. Go and work for my cousin. But there we are. Um, and while I was over there, uh, they knew I was a DJ because he, he, he arranged this blue light thing. Now, the blue light thing is where they get children together, um, young and teenagers. And they try and teach them about being able to have a good time without drink and without drugs and I went over there to do some DJing as well for him oh you know no charge no free charge and that's what this is this is a gift from the people of the island thanking me for doing the job and it says on the back to Chris thank you very much from the Blue Light Council Norfolk Island summer 2010 and that was all engraved on there. Isn't that lovely? And I treasure that. And this is Norfolk Island pine wood. Right? And it's been, um, what do you call it? Lacquered, laminated, lacquered on the side there. And I had to have permission to put that over there. I had to have permission to bring that back into Australia. Um, when I say the, the mainland, uh, because they're very, very strict on bringing in anything like wood or food or animal products. I don't know if you've ever seen that programme, um, Border Security or something like that. And when they do the Australian one, it's, it's, it's really strict. A lot of people, Chinese in particular, seem for some reason to want to bring in their own food and they always get caught. They always, or either that or drugs or something like that, other people other than the Chinese trying to bring in drugs. But generally, from watching that programme, it seems to be a lot of Chinese people try to bring in their own food. And they always get caught. And it's the, the, the sheer stupidity of the people that actually think they can get away with it. They actually think that no one has ever put drugs in the bottom of their shoes. No one has ever had a false bottom on a suitcase. And, they, you know, they've got these false bottoms and they put something in there. Uh, they, they actually really believe they can get away with it. How stupid are you? And you can understand the border wanting to be so strict about this food and that because they're trying to keep out various diseases and things like that. That animal foods could carry or even plant life. You know... Now, certainly here in the country, um, Japanese knotweed, right? That was bought over a few years ago. You're getting that, that in your garden. You're in serious trouble. You cannot get rid of the stuff. I actually bought one uh, when I first moved here about 20 years ago. Put it in. And I immediately noticed how quick it was growing. Oh, that's funny. My, do you know, my cousin's just popped up on Skype. Isn't that funny? Wow. Um, I don't suppose he's, he wouldn't be watching this. Surely not. He should be in bed by now over in Australia. And I noticed immediately how quickly it was growing. We're talking a couple of inches every night. And I said to my mate, I said, uh, oh, I can't, uh, was it a, um, might be a neighbour. Yeah, it was my, my neighbour down the end, Pearl. Oh, she's wonderful, Pearl. We love Pearl, my neighbour. And I mentioned it to her. She said, no, get rid of it quickly. She said, it will take over. She said, I said, oh, well, I want something growing up the wall. She said, yeah, but I grow up the wall. It will lift the tiles, cost you a fortune. Dig it up now. So I dug it up and put, don't, you know, don't just chuck it over the fence. You don't do that, do you, you naughty person with those weeds? You've been chucking weeds over that fence. Stop it now. 
So um, I, I dug it up, put it in the bin, and they took it away, and I suppose it, it took over a landfill site somewhere. So you can understand the Australians, they don't want this stuff in the country. Of course they don't. So they're very, very, very strict at the border control. And if you do have anything, <coughs> such as a clock, because this is wooden, and they're, they're quite serious about wooden stuff as well being brought into the country. So I went to the um, customs as I was coming back from Norfolk Island and back into, was it Sydney or Melbourne? Can't remember where I was going now. Can't remember anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... Uh, and he took it out and had a good look, he says, OK, and he, like, touched it and all this business, and he said, yeah, that looks like it's fairly well sealed. Yeah, that'll be fine. Have you got anything else? I said, no. I said, I'll open my bag. He said, no, that's fine, sir. Uh, you carry on, and that was it. So they are very strict. But it is really stupid how people try and bring stuff into other countries when they're not allowed. And even more stupid than that is these idiots, idiots who go to, shall we say, Party Islands, where they're renowned for drug taking and all that business, and they try and sneak in drugs. Now, what's that place near Australia? Indonesia. Do you remember those girls, Indone those English girls, British girls, who got caught? It, was it Indonesia? I think it was. Anyway, they got caught with all these drugs in their bag. And ended up in prison. And then they come on and then they start crying in front of the cameras and all that. Well, you shouldn't have done it, you stupid women. Stupid people who do that sort of thing. They think they're the first people to, to put some, some pills, say, say some, some illegal pills or drugs, in perhaps an, an aspirin bottle, thinking that, you know... The security people are not going to open the aspirin bottle and check its aspirins because it says aspirins on the front. And that's, that's the sort of thing. Or they hide them in packets. Now, what was the other one I saw? I think it was like um, a wooden, wooden chairs or something like that. And someone had carved out part of the chair, put the drugs in, I don't know, heroin or whatever it is, or that, that white... Um, what's that stuff now? Uh, cocaine. And they, they put it in the chair and then glued the wood back, thinking that no one would know. And it, it looked a good job. But they've got these machines in uh, airports and things, and things go for, And they can see through the stuff. You know, people are so stupid. And then, you, as I say, you see them on the television and they've taken a film crew in there and they're crying and all that. Well, I, I've got no, no sympathy at all. I mean, bad enough going in prison here for something new, I would have thought. I had to go somewhere in another country where they don't speak English properly and be thrown in prison there for a number of years. Well, you might as well kill yourself, mightn't you? Idiots, idiots. So that's uh, today's little item of interest behind us this morning. Now let's say hello to some people. Good morning to Marge. Morning, Marge. Little email coming up from Marge later. And Marge has also sent in an audio clip. An audio, how excited, an audio clip. And uh, good morning to Daniel who says, hi, Chris. Right. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Hi, Chris. Morning, Daniel. You've been very quiet this week, I must say. I would like to apologise to you and the Manilow girls for my comments on last week's show. I have been listening to Barry Manilow all week, non-stop, and I now love him a bit. A bit? What, what do you mean, a bit? What does that mean? You love him a bit. <laughs> Well, you keep listening. I mean, as well as you've probably listened, I would guess, um, Daniel, to the studio albums, which are all, like, perfect and all that business. Now, what you've got to get on to now is the live recordings. They really are something else. You just put one of these... And I can, can I just recommend for you, Daniel, uh, you probably look be able to look this up on YouTube, but, in fact, I'm going to do it. I will look it up for you now. Because I'm that type of guy. But I've got a whole weekend off. I've got a whole weekend off this weekend. Um, I'm going down to Wandsworth later. One of my friends has left his... Let me just check this.
Let's see. There it is. I think that's the one. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, Daniel, if you have a look up, Barry Manilo Gonzo, G-O-N-Z-O, uh, hit medley. Okay? Um, and th that that really is, is outstanding, that. So look up, start looking up his live stuff, okay? And he says, Chris, will you call off the Manilo girls now? Oh, d don't ask me. It's nothing to do with me. You know, you have to, you'll have to go and, and, and seek out the Manilo girls one by one and personally apologize. Well, they're not worried about being apologized. So you've got to apologize to Barry. You need to find his Facebook page and put an apology on there, preferably a video. If you can do videos, you know, you, you know, you could you could do yourself, you know, kneeling down somewhere begging for your apology to be accepted for. You know, dissing Barry Manilow. Look, look at my face, not smiling, not happy about this. This is no joke. We don't mind you dissing politicians. You know, like, it's, it's Mr. Van. Hello, my name's Ed Slilly Van. I don't need a fun for Labour Party. Or poor, poor Nick Clegg. Poor Nick. What planet is he actually on, little Nick Clegg? Or David Cameron? I mean, you, could, you, could, you, you wouldn't apologise to him if you can find him. Is he, where is he on holiday now? Has he had about five holidays in the last week? What's all going on there? Or you could go for a pint with Nigel Farage, but not Barry. Oh, no. You're going to have to put an apology on his website. Daniel says he hasn't left the house all week. What, through fear of being attacked? Well, I'm not surprised. Not surprised. <sighs> now, where was I? Where was I, um, where was I uh, going? Oh, yes. I've got to go into Wandsworth later. One of my friends, uh, Chai, he's a lovely man from, from Malaysia. And he's going back to Malaysia on Sunday for six months, I think it is. <coughs> which, <coughs> which will pass. Oh, have I started my recordings? Just a minute. Have I started recording? Yes, I have. <gasps> oh, God. For, for one moment, I thought I hadn't been recording for the recorded part of the show. Um, and he comes along to karaoke on Wednesdays sometimes at Blueshes. I do this karaoke night at Blueshes in London Bridge. Um, Borough High Street on Mondays and Wednesdays between 10 and 2. That's a fantastic night. And he comes sometimes on Wednesdays. And it wasn't until actually yesterday morning I got in the car and I was going over to Ronnie's house and um, I noticed a phone on the seat and I thought, oh, it's got to be Chai's. So I sent him a message and he hasn't. he's just replied now. And apparently he leaves on... Sunday Sunday night and he said where are you working this week and I said well I'm not not coming into London at all now I said but I'll tell you what where, where are you tonight he said oh I might go to a karaoke in Wandsworth so I'm going to take his phone aren't I a nice person you see I could have sold that on the internet on eBay ebay.co.uk and made a small well I wouldn't have made anything it's an old Nokia thing Christ the, these these were the Nokias where you could charge the battery up on Monday and it will still be working Friday do you remember those yeah, he's got one of those. Apparently, he's lost two phones. I've I only found one, um, uh, but I'm going to have to have a look in the car and see if I can find the other one later on because that might be in there. Uh, good morning to you, Jason. Morning, Jason in Cambridge. Uh, who just skyped in a message? Is that your girlfriend? Oh, let's have a look at her. I'll give you marks out of ten. Oh, can I uh, zoom into that? No. Nope. Marks out of 10 for your girlfriend, Jason, 250. There you go. Marks out of 10 for Jason's girlfriend, 250. Morning, Jason. Marks for you, three. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Marks for myself, one and a half. That's the way it is. You get old, you get ugly, like me. Except Barry Manilow, who does not get ugly. I just want to point that out to Daniel before he comes in with some sarky comment. Uh, morning to Wendy. <coughs> Who says, nice to see the old opening, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not supposed to use that. 
Apparently that's that's now that's copywritten that new old opening, so I can't use that one anymore. I got I got ve I lead a confused life, as you know, Wendy. I got a bit confused there. She says I do prefer it. <clears throat> um, bet you're going to tell Daniel about the Gonzo hits medley. I knew it. Yeah. Oh, it's the best one, isn't it? There was another one. There, there, there's um. I've also now got Wendy. I um. I uh, got from YouTube. I think it was YouTube the one of the miracle openers do you know the miracle openers it's a miracle da, 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 da. Uh, i couldn't believe all this Bing, ba, ba. the cities and towns of, and then um who's the black guy with a curly hair really good looking you know and he's just always smiling that this this is the guy that's one of the backup singers he usually has this particular guy who I've always seen, every show I've been, I've seen him, and two girls. I'm not sure if the girls are always the same. Do they change? Wendy will know this. Wendy will know this. Do the girls change sometimes? I think one of them was in... in a group. Oh, gosh. Um, from the 70s. Uh, oh, can't get that now. Like, not Lighthouse Family. No. Um... Oh, gosh, what was she in now? But it, it, it was a... I think it was a one-hit job. Can you remember, Wendy? She'll come back to me. Kai Brackett. Is that his name? Kai Brackett. He's always happy. He's fantastic, isn't he? And he's got a good voice as well. He sings... Occasionally, he has a little bit of a solo through, through Barry's vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kai Brackett. Yeah, he's, he's great, he is. Uh, Daniel says... You and Ronnie gardening video, I'm still laughing. Did you enjoy that? We got a few comments on that that I've uh, not read out yet. By the way, Ronnie today is on a little trip. He's gone to Thorpe Park, um, which is actually not too far away from here. It's just off the M25. And Thorpe Park is... Oh, hang on a minute. Have I just put the... Um... I'm forgetting to do things today, aren't I? You know what I've forgotten to do? Put my little... Uh... Where's the... And that's it. Is that on now? Enable text. Oh, it's on. It's already on, is it? Okay, there we are. I'm getting very confused here. Um, oh, Wendy says, yes, the girls change sometimes. Yes. One of the girls, didn't she used to be in the group that did It's a Walking Miracle? Ooh! It's a Walking Miracle! Ooh. Now, what was that group? I can look that up on my music, I think. One minute. I'm sure that's a 70s thing. Let me just... Uh, if I just type in Miracle to that one. Miracle. No, can't find it. Or was it 60s? Was it 60s? No, I don't think it was. It's a walk-in miracle. Ooh. Oh, I can't remember. Um, yes, Wendy says, yes, the girls change sometimes. Are you thinking of Lady Flash from the 70s? No, I don't think that was her name. St oh, gosh. I, I can't remember now, Wendy. It had come to me when I finished the blooming show, wouldn't it? Everyone would have gone by then. Uh, yes. Uh, Daniel said, Thought Park with Ronnie's back. Oh, no, he won't be going on the rides. He's not going on the rides. He has children with him today. He's got his brother's children... I'm not sure. I think they're both under 10 years old. So he has been spending a fortune today. Ha ha ha. He said, do you want to come? You know, probably hoping that Chris is going to bail him out with some of the lunch prices and all that business. But I said, no, thank you. I've got far more important things to do. Talk to my dear, dear loyal friends and viewers here on this internationally renowned programme. United Kingdom Talk. That's what I'm here for. I shall be here every Saturday. As long as I've possibly, I've been booked to do the next 10,000 years on, as a YouTube presenter. I've been booked to do 10,000 years and I intend to talk for every last second. They are now using, in American prisons, they are now using these videos and, and, and my talking to, um, uh, to not torment, what's the word? to um, 
Oh, what is it called when you start pulling out fingernails and things like that? What's that called? Torture. To torture religious extremists in prisons to make them tell them the whole story. They are using my videos in America. Did you know that? <laughs> I live in hope that more than 100 people will one day watch this live. Today we've got eight. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Yes, Thorpe Park... <coughs> Which is like a, it's, it's a, I would say it's a small theme park. It's not very big, but it's certainly got some very nasty rides that I would never get on. It's got this roller coaster that goes along and then goes up vertically and then turns around and drops down vertically. You know, only for about four seconds do you drop. That's it. But the queues are a mile along round the corner. And I look at this and oh, why are you going on that? I did see a ride yesterday, actually, um, on someone's Facebook wall. And this ride goes again. It goes up to the top. And then it's and then it goes um, like the the ride, the track the rides on just ends. It just it stops there. And this thing then tilts like, and to go to be um, vertical, right? And then it sits there for about 20 seconds. You can imagine the screams and the shouts at the top of people that are terrified because they think they're going to die. I love it. Why, oh, why would you pay to go on something like that? Please tell me why you would do that. <laughs> It's bad enough when you're sitting in Ronnie's car when he's drunk, when he's driving. Christ, you might as well, you know, and that's free. That's free to do that. It's just as bad. So this thing, as I say, it tilts vertically, so it's stopped like that. In front of them, they can't see anything. As far as they're concerned, that's where the track ends. And then, after about 20 seconds, it starts tilting downwards, and they're screaming their heads off, and then it gets there... It gets so it's now tilt tilting. No, hor sorry, horizontally. It goes horizontal. Then it tilts vertically, so they're facing the ground, straight down, and it stops again. It stops there for ten seconds or whatever, and then someone obviously I don't know automatic or pushes a button and it goes whoosh down and 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 comes round at the bottom there. Oh God, so scary. So Thorpe Park, that's where he is today. Now, I have been um, twice to there. And yes, all the rides are there and you've got places to eat. You know, it's just them I mean, burger and chips. I don't know if I've got any nice places to eat. And there's a like a tea place and all that business. Um, but I, I thought on both occasions it looked really tired. It had it was like um, if you owned a house and you never, ever painted it or did anything to it. And you imagine the thousands of people, and it's not cheap. You know, these places are not cheap theme parks, but it looked really tired and it hadn't been kept up. I mean, I'm sure it was perfectly safe. All the nuts and bolts were done up tightly and no one was going to fall off or anything like that. But it just needed a bloody good clean and paint. You know what I mean? On the other hand, I have been to, um, I'm so lucky to have been to Disney many times now and disney is is spotless the florida one in particular it's absolutely spotless and it's well maintained and people are always going around picking up rubbish and and uh, and brushing and like now and again a ride will be closed because it's been but they don't close everything at the same time now and again they, they pick a ride and they close it you know for a number of weeks maybe a couple of months and they do it all up they repaint it and it looks all nice last time i went to disney in particular uh, when I took my nephew there in January, we had the best, oh, just the best holiday. And it still goes through my mind, that holiday, you know? Having to look after someone um, uh, for a couple of weeks. Oh, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time we had on that holiday. And uh, in particular, um, we went to Disney, Fantasyland, was it Fantasy? Uh, Magic Kingdom, Magic Kingdom. And there, my favourite ride is It's a Small World. La 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 la. I know I've told some people this before, but other people don't know it, so I'm retelling it. 
da 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 and it's just a little happy ride and you get on this boat and and there was just basically wooden cut out figures waving at you and singing in various different languages all over from all over the world and in their various different um costumes uh um na- national costumes and it's fantastic and it had clearly just been painted it looked really good and i, I would assume that they have to paint that pretty often because a lot of it's white and white is dreadful to get the dirt is done. I've got a white car and constantly having to wash it. Well, I should wash it constantly, but I don't. I usually wait for the free one when I get a service. Because I've got a car service in a week's time. Oh, that blooming yellow spanner is flashing again on my indicating board. We're not quite sure what's what's causing that. I've got a, a yellow spanner flashing at me on my um board in front of in front of my eyes in the car. Yeah. So Thorpe Park, I think once you've been to Disney, you know, everything looks a bit bit trashy, to be honest. Once you've been to Disney, they know how to do it. Leave it to them. Thorpe Park, I don't know if it's been done out. I'll, I'll, I'll wait to hear what, what he says when he <coughs> comes back later. Um, but he'll have a lovely time because the children are with him. You know, if you want to have a good time out somewhere like that, borrow some children and take them with you. Cost you an arm and a leg, but you will have a much better time. Promise you that. Um... Daniel says, uh, Thought Park, old and tired. Who else do we know like that? I don't, well, you, really, Daniel, to be honest. You're a little bit old and tired looking at your um, Skype photograph this morning. You know, uh, what, what, what age are you telling people you are this week? You know, you must be 50, 55, something like that. Are you? Is that how old you are? Possibly. Jason says, I only ever go to theme parks during the week and not in the summer. Then all the kids are in school and no queues. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, Jason. So what day has my mate gone? He's gone on the last bank holiday Saturday of the year when all the children are on holiday and off school. It's going to be packed there today. I'm so glad I didn't go. Ha <laughs> And the other thing is, queuing at Fort Park is a bit of a bit of a thing. Queuing in Disney, there always seems to be something going on around you. And Jason, I don't know if you've ever been to Disney, but certainly in the queues, they have to, not so much in you. I have to say, Euro Disney is not all that. It's not. If you've never been to Disney before, you go to Euro Disney. Yeah, you know, it's all. It's it's okay, but that's it. I'm not impressed with the Euro Disney at all. The one in Florida, there's always something going on around you. So you could be in a queue and some characters might walk past or you've got TV screens showing cartoons and things like that. There's always something going on. And, you know, you could you can go and get um, a, an ice cream or a or a churro. Churros are they're like um they're like, they're, they're, they're like donuts, but they're a long stick. Chiro sticks. Can't remember what they're made out of now. Cinnamon, the cinnamon sticks. Well, they're nice. Just come out of the queue or send someone in your little party out and get one of those and start munching on one of those when you're in a queue. I mean, you can be in... And again, you know, Disney, you need to know when to go. Now, we went in January. No queues. Or if, if there were queues, not very long. You go in July, June, July, August. Oh, my God, it's dreadful, dreadful. And it's hot. Do not go to Florida, June, July, August. It is so unbearably hot. You can't wait to get out of the heat. Oh, it's dreadful. January, lovely weather, 70, 80 degrees. You might get a couple of cold days where it dips below 70. Just take a jumper with you. Uh, But the sun's out all the time, most of the time. But if you go in June, July, you will get some of the most wonderful thunderstorms you've ever seen. You know, lightning in the sky all the times. Yeah, so I don't blame you, Jason. Don't go to these theme parks in school holidays. You're just asking for trouble. Good morning to John, who says Alton Towers is much better. Now, I haven't been to Alton Towers, John. Um, it's quite it's, That's up north somewhere. Is it quite far away? So I haven't been to Alton Towers. But again, it's just all roller coasters, isn't it? <clears throat> Apart from roller coasters, John, what else is at Alton Towers, please? Do tell me. Because I don't do roller... I hate them. I, do... <laughs> I really do. I hate them. I do not want to go on roller coasters. 
Uh, Daniel says Thorpe Park. Uh, oh, Daniel says he's forty. Oh, come on! And the, is that plus VAT? Daniel, is it forty plus VAT? Marge says second childhood is wonder. I want to go to Disney, but those rides, I would have to take a bath. But what's a bath bag? I don't know what that is. Um, a bath bag. Don't know what that is. What is a bath bag? You don't need to go on, on roller coasters in Disney, March. There's plenty of other things to do. That's the beauty of it. I don't go on roller coasters. I'll tell you what you'd like, Marge. They've got one of those in Magic Kingdom. They've got one of those roundabouts with the horses that go up and down. Do you know the ones I mean? You just get, hang on to one of those. They're good. And there are rides that are similar to roller coasters, but actually move quite slowly. You know, there's no sudden dips and all this going up and down. Oh, no. Make me feel sick. Marge says, I've just turned 35, 55 and really wish you wouldn't go on about age. I love being my age. No, I'm not going on about you. It's Daniel who thinks he's like Peter Pan. Peter Pan of the of, of the plumbing industry. He still thinks he's one of the lads. You know, 18 years old, just come out of school and has started plumbing. I mean, the girls, when he starts talking to the girls, they just laugh. Is that right, Daniel? <laughs> Jason says the States always do a good job of entertaining um, you in the queue with, with, with videos. Oh, they do, you know, because it's, it's horrible sitting in there having to queue up all the time. Um, bath bag is a sick bag. Oh, is it? Rip? Thank you, Wendy. I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> you always see those on the back of planes, don't you? On the back of the seat in front. Well, I mean, you know, not on the seats I sit in, but <laughs> the, the back of the, there's always a sick bag in that, in that blooming thing in front of you together with the magazine, the, um, duty free magazine with watches. They're like four hundred pounds and and rubbish like that. Actually, you know what I was going to do? That I just heard my door go. Just a moment. Is this? Has someone entered my house? Oh my god! It could be religious extremists coming up the stairs, ready to attack. I beg your pardon. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> Get in here! <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm knackered. <laughs> Have you just... Come here, come here. Look who it is. I can't get over this. It's my nephew, Jimmy Butler. Get here. Well, it's, they're there. Those two. You've got to look over those two. Oh, my knack, because that's recording. Oh. Yeah, just move. Yeah, you made that, didn't you? Well, this is a surprise. Good God. When was this arranged? Last week. Are you going to Fort Park? Come in, come in. Is he down there at all? No, it's just me. Well, come, 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 come close because you've got to get, first, got to get in, got to get in there. Right, I'll arrange the chair. Blimey, <laughs> I haven't got a microphone out for you. Oh, sorry, I'm not. Eh? It's all right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't get over that. <laughs> My nephew has driven down from from Lincolnshire to bit ah. <laughs> this is wonderful. Let me see if I can get another mic up and running. <coughs> You'll have to talk. You'll have to talk amongst yourselves now. Hang on a minute. Oh, I've got to get this working now. Jimmy Butler on KWT. Sorry. Uh, I can't, can, was that working like that? I don't know if that's going to work. Hang on, let's get this on here. Sorry, boys and girls, I was completely unprepared for this. What a nice surprise. There we are. Let's, let's plug that in there. Let's see if that works. One, two, three. Uh, line four, is it? Um, hmm. No, that's the wrong one. Oh dear. No, Jim, you're just going to have to share my one. Have you... Were you staying at Ronnie's last night or something? I drove down this morning. Christ. Where are you going? Are you going somewhere? No. 
literally bank holiday if I thought. Hey. Bank holiday if I thought I'd come down. Well, you're in luck because I'm off tonight. Well, that's good then, isn't it? Yeah. Right, come over, come closer, come closer, come oh. closer, and listen, we've got messages coming in now. Oh, this is, look, it's my sister. Morning, what a surprise. Yes, it was. Have you been sitting there all the time, Sharon? I've been watching since the start. Have they? Yeah. Is that wise? A bit closer. <laughs> Sorry, mate, because it's, cause it's, only, it's only a little, tiny little screen. Look, what a surprise. I just, I just dumbfounded this morning. Dumbfounded. What time did you leave? Uh, eight. That's a bit early, isn't it? I know, I was still off sleep. And now are you getting on with your your black oh, box? It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Is it? Yeah. He's got a black box in his um car uh for the insurance. So so what does what does this do, this black box? Tell us all. Monitors everything. Steering, speed, revs. Yeah. Revs? Yeah, even your revs. Oh, I've got a problem with mine at the moment. What? My I've got a yellow spanner keeps flashing on. Oh yeah. And they said it was the Diesel particulate filter needs to um, uh, recover or something, re regenerate. Do you know anything about that? No, you lost me at the start of the conversation. Oh, did I? Is yeah. that usual? Because Jimmy, Jimmy Butler fixes cars. He fixes cars. Not the engine bit, the um, panels and... Yeah. Panels. What is it? Bodywork. Pan of bodywork. That's it. Bodywork. I could do with a bit of that myself. Do you think you could do anything with my yeah, face? A bit of filler would do that. Hey, bit of filler. <laughs> hey, yeah, look, there's your mum. Morning, what a surprise, she says. Don't take any notice of that picture on there. Oh, I'll cool. just cover that up for yeah, you. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Simon says, I've just been listening to Barry Manilow all week. I don't love him. It's just given me the idea of having a nose job. Oh, you don't want... Oh, well, fun... Yeah. Do you know what I'm thinking about? <laughs> what? Right. Well, I've seen this thing. You, see, you know that bit there? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that looking red? It is, isn't it? No, it's not. You know why? Do you why? know what happened to it this week? Yes, was it yesterday? No, Thursday. Um, we were... I was unloading some shopping from the back of Ronnie's car. And then I said, oh, what's that? I don't know. It was like a chocolate or something in the back of his car. And he said, you're not having that. And then grabbed the thing, tried to close it, and my head was in the way. Good. Look, tender, you don't care. Anyway, so I sent, look, so that bit there, you can get this thing now. It's not a wig, right? It's like a tattoo, oh like a God. little tattoo. And they do little dots on your head to try and cover that bald bit. Oh, my God. <laughs> what do you think of that idea? Yeah, go for it. Do you think I yeah, should? Yeah. Will it okay. make me look young? Yeah. <laughs> 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 She's been there all morning. Who's this calling in? We've got a call now. Good morning. Who's calling in? Morning. Oh, it's my sister. Yeah, she is. Look, it's me. Oh, this is a. Hang on. I'm just muting you. Are you muting me? Yeah, you got my little boy there. He's just turned up. I know. We've been waiting and waiting. You've been ranting on. R what do you mean ranting on? <laughs> Oh, I want to see my little boy. I'm going to move over a bit just to just to bring him closer into the picture because you don't want to see me now, do you, sis? Oh, no, I don't mind looking at you. And Daddy's here as well. Oh, say hello to Daddy. Hello, everyone. Is there, have hello, you got any children boy. there? Hey. Is there any little ones there? No, but they've all been told to watch. You've got them all watching your show. <laughs> I thought it looked quite busy this morning on the figures. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the VIP guest, didn't you? <coughs> no one watches. No one watches shows. Only eight people. That's it. Well, you know the answer. It's Jimmy. Jimmy Butler. On ca well, we should, we should... Oh, yes. Maybe if I put something on Facebook... You used to have surprise guests. See? Jimmy started a trend. <laughs> one minute. My nephew has just turned up. We've got an email about those noises, by the way. I beg your pardon? An, e an email. Hang on. Right, so there we are. Good. So, did you know about this then, Sharon? Yeah, last week. Well, I, I might have suddenly gone on holiday somewhere. Well, Jimmy's been in touch running. Oh, have you now? Yeah, I have. I yeah. Have All secret. All oh, top secret. And you wouldn't oh, okay. go on holiday about telling me anyway. Eh? You wouldn't go on holiday about telling me. Look at him. Well, I might have done. I might have gone somewhere else, you know. 
of you know what sort of jet set person I am. Very much looking no. forward to going to Israel. He don't want to go to Israel. I said, oh, no. why don't you come? He wanted, I thought he might want to come and see the Jesus things and all that, you know, how Mary, full of grace. No, I'm, I'm anyway, right. Jimmy's come down to do the ice bucket challenge with you. Oh, no, I haven't got to do that. Oh, have I? he's done his this morning, so oh. I expect you to do yours. Can you just grab those bits of paper off there, Jim? Because I, people might not know what this ice bucket oh, thing yeah. is. Yeah, it's the one on top. I did print this off earlier. So the ice bucket challenge... Do you, know, do you want to read that out for us? No, did, I do is, not. Oh, all right, then I'll do it myself <laughs> then. <coughs> um, boys and girls, this is the ice bucket challenge. Have I got to do this now? Are you going to throw the water at me? It says, and, and this is to do with Macmillan, I think. Is it Macmillan? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Oh, yeah, Macmillan Nurses. Get involved in the perfect summer fundraising challenge that's sweeping across social media. The Ice Bucket Challenge, uh, a friend, and raise money to help people affected by cancer. It's simple. Just challenge someone via Facebook, which, which uh, Gary did to me last yeah. night, didn't he? Um, to have a bucket of ice cold water poured over their head in exchange for a text donation to Macmillan. Film it share it and then sit back and watch the nomination process take over take a peek at some of our favorites to get an idea so i've got to do this later that will that will be monday's video then i think shall oh well, you should do it like mine son he's done it it's a little comedy sketch so that's for you and jimmy just make a comedy sketch a comedy sketch yes is that the challenge? I've got a comedy sketch as well. Yeah, check out Martin's and then you'll see. <coughs> <coughs> All right, well, we'll I'll have a little look later on then, sis. What are you doing yeah. today? Watching my boy and crying that he's not here. Oh, go on, cry. Cry more. <laughs> cry. We like to see tears from my sister. Horrible. Please, let me hear the crying. Go on, cry, Shell. <laughs> Is that good enough? Pathetic. Oh, that's a bit pathetic, to be honest, sis. But you will definitely cry when you watch Martin. Well, thank you very much for this very, very interesting conversation, Shay. You're always very interesting and fascinating. <laughs> I know I am. You look after my boy. Don't you worry. He'll be five stone heavier by the time I finish with him. Oh, that's fine. And there's a film actually on at the cinema today. If you want to go and see that later. One moment, please. Oh no, don't look, don't, 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 into the storm. Do you fancy seeing that later? Don't know, what's it about? Um, All right, then I'll let you go, then we say goodbye. Oh, don't rush off, Sha. We don't mind you speaking for any longer. Uh, another ten seconds if you really want to. <laughs> No, you're all right, you get on with your show. Cause I'm Thank sure you. you've got a little bit more ranting to go on. All right, sis. Bye! 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, there's your mum making sure you got here on time. Good boy. Now we've got some messages. Wendy says, what a lovely surprise. Hi, Jimmy. Bring that Chris Reardon ice buck ch challenge on. I'm not looking forward to this at all, really. <laughs> it's just going to be so cold. I know what I'll have to, what I'll have to do is turn, turn the hot water on today. So oh, that immediately no. the, the vi we've made the video, I can immediately get into the shower. Are you, you're getting wet and all then. Why? Well, it's not just me, is it? Yeah. You've got to get wet and no, all. Not yes. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Marge says, Chris, did you just say the F word? No. I don't know. I don't think so. Don't think so. I don't know, is he? No. I hope not. I didn't. Oh, I can't, no, I wouldn't have done. <clears throat> You automatically switch off your swearing when you're doing this show. That is true. That is true. Um, John says, other than roller coaster, is just hit the duck and win a teddy. What, are Alton Towers? Have you been to that? No. I don't like roller coasters. No, neither do I. But I was just saying that Disney, you can go Disney. There's plenty of other things to do other than roller coasters, yeah. isn't there? Except in Harry Potter. But I gather there was a bit to Harry Potter that we didn't see. Don't know, was it? That, oh, that was in um, Universal, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, um, and that's Simon there. Uh, Can you cover this bit up, please? I don't. I don't. I don't oh, sorry. Yeah. 
hurting my little eyes. Oh, it's hurting your eyes. Uh, you, that's only it's like a poster. That look what you have on your. What have you got on your wall at home? Britney Bloody Spears. Oh, Joey Essex. God, Joey Essex, <laughs> do me a favour. I'm sure he's going to come out as being gay soon. Just weird. Um, <laughs> Uh, you should always, Marge says, you should always have a surprise guest, people. Would we'll tune in just to find out who shows up. Oh, let's see if the, oh no, the ratings haven't gone up, even though I've mentioned you, look. In fact, they've gone down <laughs> one to seven. Mum, Never mind. Mum's gone off. Mum's disappeared now, they show. <laughs> Shania says, what a lovely surprise. Yes, Shania. Hang on a minute, how old are you, Shania? Yeah, you haven't got a girlfriend, have you? No. What about Shania? Let's see if we can find a picture of her. There she is, that one there. Any of these girls you fancy there? Which one? You've got three to choose from. I won't tell you which one's Shania. Which one do you want? Oh, is that Jory? Are they a bit old for you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, sh- is that the first time you've been told that, Shania? You're a bit old for my nephew. <laughs> I've been told that quite a few times. I can recently. imagine. Yeah. Uh, Jason says, little Jimmy Butler isn't so little anymore. No, it's about six foot. He's taller than me. I can't stand up because we are disappear from view. But, yeah, he's um, he is actually taller than me. Wendy's off. She's got to go because she has to catch the end of the show. So see you later, uh, Wendy. Right. Um, now, let's let's read this email. Oh, there's a few little bits and pieces here. Do you want to read any of these? No. I just want to sit there and look pretty for the people. Pretty. Pretty. Um, Ian Duff saw the show about the hanging baskets. <clears throat> And unfortunately, a lot of you seem to be agreeing on this subject in that he says, I think Ronnie's hanging basket came out better than yours. So I'm a little bit, dis- it's not funny <laughs> that, you know, these are people that I've watched for years <laughs> and then they're, they're not supporting me. I feel very, very unsupported. Uns- I should need one of those support bra. I should need a support bra soon because that's all hanging down as well. Uh, Marge says... Um, you brighten my world, Chris. See, I brighten people's words. Maybe you're brightening someone's world Maybe today. I am all the yeah. time. You are constantly brightening worlds. Make me buy so many adult diapers, however, because I pee myself when I laugh out so hard. Is that because age? Or... Is that an age? Is that an age thing, Marge? We can't quite hold on to it anymore. <laughs> Chris has got to that stage too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of eyebrows, oh, that was weird. What? Oh, you, you didn't see Monday's show. So I was in this. I was working last Saturday, and this um this this bloke come up to me. He says, "Excuse me, can I just do this?" And he went like that on my eyebrows. And I took a step. I said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> he said, "No, I've got an eyebrow fetish." <laughs> he likes doing that to people's eyebrows. Weird. So Marge says, "Speaking of eyebrows." <clears throat> I've never thought about it, but I have this love of eyebrows on Mr. Spock as a kid. Do you know Mr. Spock? Star no. Trek? No. You never heard of Spock never from Star heard Trek? Of him. You see, these are the people that watch The Only Way is Essex. They don't even know what Star Trek is. That He was the original... Star- Look, Mr. Spock, one moment. Mr. Spock. Mr. Spock, there he is, Mr. Spock. Burp, burp. See his eyebrows. I like his hair, do. Do you like his hair? Shall I have mine done yeah. like that? Yeah. When I have the dots put in my head, I've got to find <laughs> out how much that is. I am thinking of having that done, having the little tattoo dots in my head to hide, to hide the bald bit, boys and girls. Um, <clears throat> she says, I love the eyebrows of Mr. Spock as a kid. He never really had emotions, but the eyebrows would speak volumes. Another would be the hands. Men's hands are so amazing. Show you my hands. Up here. Amazing hands. Um, Amazing how the hands, how versatile they are. So eyebrows and hands are my main things. Marge, do you want to touch Jimmy's eyebrows? Would you like that, Marge? We could send some off. What's happened there? Software update. Okay. What if I get some scissors? Oh, no. Now, if it. we just take a little bit out Forget of there, it. we can post Forget it to Marge. It. Forget it. Or shave them off completely. <laughs> I've got one of those. Let me get a razor. One minute. <sighs> hey? No? No. But, but. Hello! <laughs> um, what a lovely birthday song you gave, and amazing that you knew my age. Yeah, Marge is 2,060 years old. <laughs> Aren't you, Marge? <laughs> 
Funny how I'm only four years older than you. And so that means you're about 2060, if I'm correct. <laughs> You could be a neat advertiser of stuff because she saw the the Waitrose, the, the Waitrose porridge thing that we did this week, didn't you, Marge? Thank you very much, my darling. All right. Uh, Marge has also sent in a little audio clip. So let's uh, have a listen to that. OK. Hello, Chris. I'm trying out something. I'm using my smartphone and which is actually smarter than I am. <laughs> ah, it took me a while to figure it out, but I'm, I'm about 10 years behind times when it comes to technology. But anyway, I really like it. It's really nice. It's getting all the buttons and things to work like I want to properly. Well, anyway, I enjoyed your videos on the gardening. But I, um, I was watching how you put a little bit of dirt in there at time and actually the pots they look well they look very good on both of them i think your pot was bigger though it kind of made an illusion like it was bigger it took more plants to fill the spaces but like you said it will fill out so i don't like i don't like contest because to me everybody's a winner <laughs> you know it's just a different design ron's was good and yours was good but anyway as far as choice i say they're both got good have a good e evening. I'm sorry. I hate recording myself. I start stuttering. Have a good week ahead. Ta-ta from Margie in Oklahoma. Thank you, Marge. Sending in your little uh, audio clip there. Um, you just, if you could just, <coughs> if you're going to send in an audio clip, Marge, maybe if you could get closer to the phone. I'm just trying to help you. Okay, get a bit closer to the phone and speak louder, um, because when it got to me, it was very quiet. So I've either had to boost it up, and that's um, brought a lot of hissing on there as well. Um, Jimmy's dad just wrote in. Where's that gone? Why's that gone, Jim? I don't know. Take a second. I don't know. That was there a minute ago, wasn't it? That's disappeared. Have I deleted that? I can't have deleted that. Oh, where's it gone? Uh, is it there? That was there a minute ago. Things are, things are disappearing this morning. Sent. No, not there, not there. Hmm. Anyway, it was just about the Walking Miracle song. I think he said it was by um, Essex. A group called Essex. So we'll have to have a look on that uh, later on. Shania says, I've been told I'm old many, many times. I'm glad I'm, I've never aged, have I really, Jimmy? You know, ever since you've known me, I've looked this youth, youthful self, haven't I? Yeah, it's a lot of air. Well, just a bit. But, oh, yes. Yeah, I was going to show you that, weren't I? Now, where is it? Look, this is the hair thing that I was talking to you about, Jim. Now, that's gone as well. Where's that gone? Oh. Oh, we'll have to have a look later, but it's like you'd like put little dot, dots on the board bit. I wonder how much that is. It's just like a, a sharpie. Chopper like, pen. It, oh yeah, look, black felt pen. That's get to need. work. All you need. Right, get to work. Right, let me just. Can you see that on there or not? Can you see that on there? Oh yeah, looks good. Does it? Is that working? Yeah. Show the camera. Thank you. Look. Can they see it? Hang on. Yeah, I think they can see that. Does that work? Yeah, look, it's covering out. <laughs> <laughs> let's do one more message then uh, Daniel says I love the mini Jimmy when will it be on the road ah mm, well there's a little bit of a story behind the mini I'm afraid you may tell him uh, well I sent you through some MOT can you stop please but, yeah <laughs> and uh, it come back with what, high... what did you say then it went through some MOT right and it come back with high exhaust emissions which is a carburetor problem. Yeah. I'm just trying to turn you up a little bit because you're quiet. We're not all like you and loud. No. Carburetor problem. And What's uh, the carburetor do then? What's that do? To be honest, I'm not too sure. Okay. One more body work. Does it mix the petrol yeah. and air? Yeah, that's it. That's right. Petrol and oil. See, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> uh, basically it's going to be a lot of money to repair it. So Dad got me a cheap car for the moment till the means on the road. And what you say? So what you driving? A Corsa, a little Vauxhall Corsa. And what is the warp capability of that particular Starship? Oh, I don't know. I can't try it, can I? My black box. 
Yes, you can. You're still going to warp. Oh, I can do. I've done warp seven on the way down. Warp seven, maximum warp. He is allowed to to fly this class A starship. Is <laughs> is warp seven. <laughs> Thank you. Right, uh, I've got a nice long email here from Angel. Uh, Angel only lives that. She only lives a few doors, uh, like at the top there. Okay. Yes. And uh, I'll read that uh, next week sometime because we've got to do for Monday. We have to do our ice bucket challenge. We will both be getting very wet because you haven't done it yet, have you? No. <laughs> Good. Um. So finally, a couple of little bits and pieces here uh, the, the, that I've missed out. Um, Andy wrote in when when we did the um, uh, video down at uh, Mum and Dad's grave. Uh, Andy says, "Done with respect and humour, just your style." Mum and Dad would have been proud. And he also says, "I could be the new Alan Titchmarsh of cemetery makeovers because we're thinking of doing a new business. Oh, yeah. Cemetery makeovers, you know, for a small price. Like they ring me up and say, "Oh, hello, Chris. Yes, da 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 da. Uh, grave, you know." six months ten years old could you go and do it up and then we go down and then take photos and send them on it so could, that the person doesn't actually have to turn it like it could work. how much how should I charge for per grave I think per grave including plants I would say 35 pounds sounds cheap is it cheap yeah I think so but you could, you would buy the plants for no more than eight pounds so if you had four yeah well, that's £120. 30, 60, 90, 121, 31, 40, 140, 145 pounds. Did you see how quickly I was able to add that up in my head? Yeah, Can you do that? No. 10 plus 17. No, I can't. Quickly, 10 plus 17. 27. Mm. I'm a bit pretty face, am I? <laughs> well, where is the pretty <laughs> face? Please show me now. <laughs> also, um, on the subject of the cat. Did you see about the cat this week? Custard the cat. No. He hangs around Hilton Hotel and they keep chucking him out. <laughs> and then Ronnie fed him, took him some biscuits. The manager come running out with his clipboard. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> oh, what a tosser. Eloise says, love, love, love you and Ronnie carrying on. Thank you for caring about Custard the cat. We love cats. You've got a cat, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Peach is the cat. Peach. She used to hate me. <laughs> she don't anymore. No. Okay. She come. Ew! 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 And when they meow, all the teeth come out. Ew! Can you do it? No. Please try. Ew. It. Can you do that again? Ew. Right, I'm going to copy that little bit and send that on to all your friends. Because <laughs> they all do think I'm quite a cool dude, they don't, don't they? They, they don't. do. They don't. I mean, I remember. That was luck. When we Luke. were walking, Luke. we were walking to your um, to your brother's house, my other nephew Gary, and then this car come tearing past, and I said, "Blimey, who's that there?" And you pretended that you didn't know I didn't them. Know. I don't know who they are. And then it came back the other way, zoomed past. I said, "There it is again." Are you sure you don't know them? And he said, "No, I don't know who they are." And then it come part, and then it came to and it stopped, and it was Jimmy's friends. So I immediately poked my head in the window and said, Hello, I'm cool Uncle Dude Chris. And Jimmy just turned away and went, Oh, no. Like that. Why is that, Jim? Mm. Embarrassed. It's like I'm an embarrassment to you. Why is that? Oh, I don't know. I don't understand that. You know what we were talking about yet earlier? Chiros. Oh, they're nice. Now, what are they again? Cinnamon, Cinnamon sticks. sticks. And it's like a... Like a donut yeah, type stuff like in it, like a long sort of, stick. Yeah. He bought you bought three once, and you a three at a time. Why don't any weight go on there? Look, nothing. Um, let me see. Eloise carries on to say, um, I can't understand why the assistant. Well, he wasn't assistant. He was like a, a like probably assistant manager manager type type person you know he was about 25 years old comes out with the suit like very very important people we don't do important people do we we don't hello hello you seem to have lost you weren't taking any notice then why this look he made me this when he was a little boy didn't you cost 40 pounds 40 quid that was in scotland 
when you went on your first plane trip. Um, uh, unless you thought you were feeding custard something that was bad, Chris, perhaps your YouTube to Barry should be about how much his music means to you and how he has given new friendships with people all over the world. Have a good weekend, gentlemen. So, yeah, Barry Manilow. Now, you are considering now, aren't you, coming to a Barry Manilow concert no. if it involves another holiday. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll be there. See? <laughs> 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 Because he was, he was asking questions. We, I saw a survey the other week. They were saying, you know, if he was in Israel or Italy or Spain or somewhere like that, would would we go and see him? And so we had to answer what 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 country um, that you'd like him to go to. Look, Ronnie's just sent him. Are you what? Where's Ronnie then? I thought he was out. He is out. Are you? I don't know. He's, he's, he's not watching his mobile phone, is he, or something like that. Ronnie says, he, 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 I can keep a secret. I can't, and I should be telling everyone your secrets later on, Ronnie. Thank you very much. John says, I have told the jumped up person in the suit to go whistle and carry on feeding custard. Poor custard. He's a lovely cat. I'll try and get a picture of him, OK? Mary says, you two are like a comedy team. I love it. And Ronnie, you are a sweetheart for to taking treats with you for Custard the Cat. Obviously, the assistant manager at that hotel is on a power trip. Oh, don't we know them? People on power trips. We don't like them. They get on our nerves. They are top. Um, I'm glad you set him straight. He probably doesn't even like animals. As for your Manilow video, I like Eloise's idea. Have a nice night. <clears throat> and Deanna says, please, can we have more of you and Ron together? Much more. I loved it. Ronnie is a kind man as well as you, Chris. Together you crack me up as far as your video to Barry. I think it should be about what Barry's music means to you. Well, it's just nice, isn't it, oh, to listen to... This is going to be a sob story. No, it's not. <laughs> why is it going to be a sob story? I'm not going to mention that very I'm on lonely. my own, you know, and I'm a very lonely person and get very depressed all the time. I'm not going to mention that. But I won't be depressed today because you've turned up. Good. Um, I don't think we can read that out, can we, Jimmy? I don't think we'll be reading that particular piece out from, <laughs> from, um, from Daniel. Thank you very much for that comment. Who says, now you're in the studio, you, can you tell me if it's as much as a shambles as it is, as it is watching it? Yeah. It's all bodge in here. What do you mean it's all bodge? <laughs> <laughs> would you like to describe this, this studio before uh, we disappear because it's time to go a mess oh thank you very much <laughs> Stacey's there as well look Stacey good morning Stacey you're right darling is Evie there bleh, bleh, bleh. do the noise for Evie bleh, bleh. thank you bleh. Simon says does Jimmy fancy a drive down to the Isle of Wight Shania seems very keen if you're paying petrol <laughs> <laughs> You've got to send the petrol money. Oh, well, look, we've done an hour and ten minutes, so it's time to disappear, Jimmy Butler. I know that you... Did you, did you want oh, to stay on for another upset. hour or two or anything like that? No, I'm, I'm cool. I'm Are good. you I'm, sure? I'm starving. Are you hungry? Yeah, I've not eaten. Oh, right, OK. Since, well, I got up at seven. What do you want? Food. I don't know if Carver is open. Oh, no, I don't like that. No? No. OK. Should I cook something? I'd like to go home tomorrow and not be ill. <laughs> McDonald's then. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to disappear now. Thank you very much, boys and girls, for watching today. Do send in an email, um, and we'll read it out next week. Uh, those the, 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 uh, uh, Angel's email that I didn't have time to read out, I'll read out on one of the um, uh, short shows next week, boys and girls. OK? Email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And uh, we're going to have dinner. Thank you very much. Say goodbye, goodbye Jimmy. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.